Hello, my name is Dante Belay. Uh, this is my AMI QT presentation on Kennedy's disease. Um, I encountered several patients that had a uh, who were suspected to have Kennedy's disease and that were still awaiting genetic testing. And this in part inspired me to, to put together a talk on Kennedy's disease today. So we're gonna just, this is an overview. We'll move through definitions, signs and symptoms, pathophysiology of the illness, epidemiology, natural history, tests, treatment, case studies, research, and also a summary at the end. So what is Kennedy's disease? Kennedy's disease is a um, known as essentially spinal and bulbar muscular atrophy, which is a rare progressive motor neuron disease with multi-system uh, involvement manifesting as an androgen insensitivity, diabetes, sensory neuropathy, or also autonomic nerve, nervous system involvement. It's also known as X-linked bulbous spinal neuropathy or X-linked bulbous spinal neuronopathy. Uh, I also mentioned KD, Kennedy's disease, it's kind of the most commonly used term for it. It's a microsatellite and trinucleotide expansion disorder due to an enlargement of the CAG um, receptor gene, um, the CAG repeat in the androgen receptor gene on the long arm of chromosome X. Um, in terms of the symptoms and signs of Kennedy's disease, according to this comprehensive review of the condition, the predominant phenotypic characteristics of the disease include muscle weakness, wasting of the limb muscles and bulbar muscles and respiratory muscles, muscle cramps, fasciculations, tremor, sensory neuropathy, breast enlargement, and erectile dysfunction. The autonomic nervous system can be subclinically involved, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, essentially, this is a lower motor neuron illness um, that is much slower on, in onset in comparison to uh, perhaps um, ALS. So in terms of the pathophysiology of the illness, I talked about there, you know, the androgen receptor gene essentially having far too many CAD repeats within it. So the, the AR is a nuclear receptor that is normally located in the cytoplasm and functions as a ligand-dependent transcription factor. This is bound to heat shock proteins when inactive and normally uh, it'll just bind to natural ligands, which are testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. Um, undergo post-translational modification, nuclear translocation, DNA binding, and AR-mediated uh, activation and repression of target genes. This can ultimately result in the exposure of co-regulatory surfaces AF1 and 2, so activation function 1 and 2, and a loss of androgen recep uh, receptor uh, function in people with Candy's disease due to mutations leads to this androgen insensitivity, which is thought to underlie some of the uh, hormonal changes that we see in people with Kennedy, is like the gynecomastia or decreased fertility, for instance. Uh, in addition, um, these when the catch repeat is uh, beyond 38, polyglutamine uh, glutamine tract proteins affect different populations of neurons and cause uh, neurons to degenerate within the body. For example, there's some evidence that anterior horn cells degenerate in spi the spinal cord in these patients. And this leads to those lower motor neuron signs that I talked about, like weakness, wasting, or fasciculations. The degeneration of the dorsal root ganglia can also occur, which will lead to sensory function interruption in distal extremities. And there's also a theory that mutant uh, androgen receptors are toxic to, fun to muscle, leading to um, some of the myopathic features that you would see in these patients. So what's the epidemiology of the illness? So um, SBMA is essentially is an X-linked recessive neurodegenerative adult onset disorder that is found in men. Women can be carriers, but they're usually not affected. SBMA is a pan-ethnic disease and it has a prevalence of less than one in 40,000 men. Some geographical regions actually have a higher prevalence of Kennedy's, interestingly. And one of the most commonly cited examples in the literature is the Vasa region of Western Finland, where 13 per 85,000 male inhabitants are actually affected by this condition. These figures probably underestimate the true prevalence of the disease because of the large number of un- or misdiagnosed patients worldwide. It has been shown that up to 2% of patients diagnosed with ALS actually have KD. We're gonna uh, actually talk about that in a little more detail coming up. Um, according to Atsudo al., um, the length of the CAD repeat in the androgen receptor gene actually correlates inversely with the age of disease onset, with longer repeats being associated with earlier onset. And so typically the onset would be from the age of 18 to 64 in the fourth to fifth decade of life. There's an excellent um, paper that's it's quite, it's cited quite frequently in the literature 
um, that discusses essentially the uh, natural history of the disease. So this is essentially a chart review combined with interviews of patients that were followed by neurologists for up to 20 years. These are all confirmed Kennedy's disease patients. And what they did is they essentially characterized different activities of, day, uh, of daily living and um, were able to correlate this with uh, the age of onset of certain symptoms. So uh, for instance, one would expect that on average in the cohort of patients um, by one's 30s, one would experience hand tremor by one's 40s, muscular weakness in the use of a handrail when going upstairs. This progresses very slowly to dysarthria in the 50s, dysphagia, the use of a cane by the end of your 50s, wheelchair use being more commonly reported in one's 60s, and then of course, aspirational pneumonia, which is one of the most common causes of death in addition to well, respiratory failure is another one, but pneumonia is what they reported here, um, and then later death in one's mid 60s. So this differs wildly from motor neuron disease in the sense that it's a much slower onset. Someone with motor neuron disease, you would expect maybe a median um, survival of around three years with a very rapid, uh, dramatic decline in motor function. Kennedy's is different in the sense that it's a very slowly progressive illness over time. And it is possible that a patient may live a normal lifespan. Um, so in terms of testing, I um, found an excellent um, article, essentially. It's the French National Guidelines for the Management of Kennedy's Disease. Um, this pooled together all sorts of literature and guidelines and professional um, you know, opinion and created essentially recommendations for how to test and treat Kennedy's. So one recommendation is electromyography in any patient that presents with signs of Kennedy's. So electrophysiological abnormalities typically extend well beyond the region affected clinically, unraveling extensive subclinical involvement. So the cue they look for is a decrease in uh, sensory amplitudes or sensory neuronopathy in non-length dependent patterns, um, along with any kind of motor anomalies that you may encounter on examination. So for instance, this is one study uh, that I uh, countered a few years ago when I was preparing my systematic review on Kennedy's um, that uh, identified a difference between motor and sensory phenotypes in Kennedy's disease. So in this study, essentially, um, Kennedy's patients were examined, you know, it was confirmed that they had Kennedy's and then compound motor action potentials were measured and sensory nerve action potentials were measured in the median, ulnar, and tibial nerves respectively. And um, the group of patients was broken up into those with a quite a long repeat, so over 47, and those with considered to be a you know, shorter repeat, so under 47 catch repeats. It was found that those with a longer catch repeat had more of a motor phenotype, whereas those with a shorter catch repeat were associated with the sensory phenotype. So the compound motor action potentials were associated with, uh, were decreased in a longer repeat, and the sensory nerve action potentials were decreased in a shorter catch repeat. So not only is, can electromyography help diagnose the condition, there's actually this pronounced difference between motor and sensory phenotypes uh, when examined. So patients can be classified into either group. And of course, the most uh, important test of all would be genetic testing for Kennedy's. So we mentioned that it's a CAJ triplet expansion in exome one of the AR gene on the X chromosome. If you're over 38 CAJ repeats, that's diagnostic for Kennedy's. So PCR testing is what is recommended. In addition to, if possible, um, you know, uh, working on a family tree to try and establish um, if there's any carriers in the family or if any other members are affected, um, testing of uh, relatives that show signs and symptoms is also important as well. Uh, that's what's usually recommended. So in terms of what Prada et al. Uh, recommended, um, after essentially invi inviting the uh, experts to comment on what is recommended um, as for treatment of Kennedy's, contacting organizations and reviewing re relevant literature and then going through an exhaustive process of multidisciplinary meetings, they came up with these um, broad guidelines for how Kennedy should be managed. Um, in general, for dysarthria, speech therapy is recommended. Occupational therapy is recommended to improve autonomy. Compensation strategies for swallowing are also recommended. Respiratory function has to be monitored because of the risk of aspirational pneumonia as one gets older. 
and monitoring for respiratory infection. Cough assist, breath stacking, and non-invasive ventilation uh, may be used. Psychological support for the emotional aspect of the illness, um, it can be quite debilitating and patients can really struggle with this sort of diagnosis and these sort of symptoms. And passive or active mobilization physiotherapy for those with poor mobility is also recommended. In terms of pharmacological management, there's, there's little that really can be done, but uh, in terms of pain from muscle cramping and aching, paracetamol, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, gabapentin, pregabalin, tramadol, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, serotonin, norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, and tricyclic antidepressants are just some of the pain modulators used in KD. But the choice of specific drugs has to be guided by comorbidities. So one has to consider renal impairments, the risk of life dependency, and one's lifestyle factors as well. Fatigue may be managed by modafinil, levocarnil. Other means of managing dysphagia and maintaining adequate nutrition would be um, using consistency adjustments, texture changes with food, thickening powders, and gelled water, which may be recommended. And today we're gonna we're actually gonna explore an interesting uh, research article that uh, looked to try and improve um, dys dysphagia in um, Kennedy's patients. So that that'll come near the end. But this is actually a point where the, there's quite a bit of research going into that right now. There's respiratory management of laryngospasms. So respiratory management includes physiotherapy, drainage and positioning interventions, insufflator, exufflator devices, what we call cough assist to clear the tracheal and bronchial secretions. Um, Kennedy's patients are predisposed to developing Brugada syndrome. So to decrease the risk of VF and PBT, one must avoid strenuous exercise, excessive alcohol consumption, and certain medications in high doses like paracetamol, for instance. So this is a case study that I came across a couple of years ago uh, when I was putting together my, um, uh, my systematic review and I, I find it really it helps highlight a very important point regarding this illness. So this is a 29 year old Afro-Caribbean male who had symptoms and signs including uh, muscle weakness in his thighs, fatigue after exercise, fasciculations, cramping and tremor since the age of 18. Over the past several months, he has also experienced similar symptoms in his fingertips. His feet usually feel cool and he reported decreased sweating. Swallowing wasn't a difficulty, but he noticed some phlegm accumulating in his throat. No choking. Gynecomastia since age 16, testicular atrophy, issues with ejaculation, decreased hair growth overall. And there was perhaps a relevant family history uh, as a 19 year old first cousin with exercise intolerance and a maternal great grandfather who had decreased mobility, but that wasn't confirmed by genetic testing. What they found was that ultimately um, on examination, he had pronounced bilateral gynecomastia, fibrillations of his muscles, atrophy of his tongue, weakness of the orbicularis oculi and orbicularis oris, prominent perioral fasciculations, severe limb weakness in his shoulders, thighs, and toes bilaterally, and difficulty when standing. Sensory, so he had a loss of temperature and vibratory sensation in his fingers and toes. A tilt table test demonstrated orthostatic tachycardia, so autonomic dysfunction essentially, um, uh, with heart rate increasing 35 to 40 beats per minute in the upright position in the absence of orthostatic blood pressure changes or symptoms. So essentially, he had a normal epidermal nerve fiber density compared to controls, and other lab evaluations and echocardiography were normal. What's interesting here is his CAD repeat which I want to focus on, it's 68. So I mentioned that you, over, if you're over 38, you're considered to have Kennedy's disease. He has 60, a repeat of 68, and he was presenting since age 18. So this really demonstrates that there really is an inverse correlation between the length of the CAD repeat and the age of onset of the illness. By age 29, he's already suffering terribly and this is uh, linked to a certain extent to the, re the repeat and the mutation. So it really can have an impact on someone's outlook um, and the difficulties that may, they may face in life. So what's new in the world of Kennedy? So as I said, there is research going on, uh, but it's, it's more of a trickle. This is an orphan illness. It's very rare and it's not very well understood. Um, or very well characterized. But one type of study that's often going on, uh, that um, types of studies that have been um, trialed are androgen suppression studies. So it's thought that um, 
dysregulation of the uh, the androgen receptor can lead to testosterone toxicity, which may underlie some of the symptomatology that you see in Kennedy's, and that by suppressing uh, androgens, one might be able to reduce essentially the severity uh, of symptoms. Um, and this study actually looked to improve dysphagia in SBMA patients. So 11.25 milligrams of luprerolin, which is a um, luteinizing hormone, releasing hormone agonist, essentially was injected subcutaneously every 12 weeks in 40 SBMA patients for the period of one year. Participants uh, were assessed, their swallow was assessed by video fluoroscopic swallowing studies. So participants swallowed three milliliters and nine milliliters of liquid barium, the same uh, amount of curd uh, type yogurt, semi-blended diet, boiled rice, 50 milliliters of liquid barium. And then they did a frame by frame video fluoroscopic uh, study using a, uh, using a scale essentially. These were measured one month before the first injection and one month after the fourth injection. This is what they found. Um, so what they were looking for overall was a outcome measure, which was pharyngeal residue. This was broken up into four categories. The liquid residue after three milliliter of liquid barium swallow, pruniform sinus residue after three uh, milliliter, milliliter liquid barium, uh, molecular tissue after uh, you know, consuming yogurt, and then piriform sinus residue after consuming yogurt. Um, what was quite interesting about it was that um, in all, when you actually look at the molecular tissue and piriform sinus tissue, there's actually a reduction in the residue in both um, parts, essentially. Uh, this is significantly reduced in both groups after the introduction of um, suppression therapy. Uh, in addition, what they also found, oh goodness, sorry, um, that when they were measuring the amylotropic lateral sclerosis functional rating scale, which is a uh, sub, essentially a scale that uh, consists of four domains, including bulbar, fine motor, gross motor, and respiratory subscores, uh, where each item is scored on a four-point scale and a higher score indicating higher level of function. They found that after the use of AST, essentially, uh, there was an improvement in the, in the score overall, um, which was interesting. So the swallowing, the swallowing sub subscore was improved. Um, overall, they concluded that Luprerolin significantly reduced the pharyngeal residue in patients with SBMA uh, after one year of treatment without any serious adverse effects. But they cautioned that longitudinal studies were needed to confirm the results. So, um, you know, as I said, a current active area of research is uh, looking at ways of using androgen suppression to potentially help uh, Kennedy's patients. But unfortunately, more research is needed currently. There aren't very many studies uh, in existence given that it's an orphan illness. Um, so in summary, KD is an X-linked uh, recessive lower motor neuron disorder. Catch repeat of over 38 is pathomonic for KD. It's a rare illness, therefore there's very little literature on it. There's very little note that's known about KD. Current treatment involves managing symptoms and currently uh, there's, there's no cure, unfortunately. Um, thank you very much for listening to my presentation. If anyone has any questions, please, please let me know. These are my references. Um, thank you kindly.